As time goes on, a lot of software is shifting to being more web-based, and this comes with some drawbacks and some perks. Now, the obvious drawback is that a lot of software ends up being way slower than it necessarily needs to be. But it does come with a pretty big perk, and I think this kind of makes up for it. So, I could take something like Microsoft Office Online, I could run it on Linux, I could run it on macOS, I could run it on Windows, and I'll get roughly the same experience. It has pretty much nothing to do with the operating system that I'm actually on. And with this software, you typically have to run it within your web browser, but you don't necessarily have to do that. If you'd rather have a more desktop-like experience, what you can do is take these websites and then just stick them within an electron wrapper. And that's what we're going to be doing today, and we're going to be doing it with a tool by the name of Natifier. And then towards the end of the video, I'll talk a bit about what the thing we're doing here is actually called. So if you want a bit of an example of what this would look like, this right here is TweetDeck. And as you can see, I've got no URL bar, I've got no bookmark bar, I've got no extensions, nothing like that. And up the top here, it basically just says that I'm running TweetDeck. So this right here is effectively the TweetDeck website stuck into an Electron wrapper. So I can just do all of the normal TweetDeck stuff. Everything on the TweetDeck domain still works perfectly fine. So I can go through all my notifications, I can go into like my, my feed here on my other account, I can scroll through this. And if I try to load up anything that will take me outside of the TweetDeck domain, so for example, I want to load up this YouTube link, what it's going to do is try to open it up within my web browser. So anything that takes you out of the TweetDeck domain will take you into your web browser, but anything besides that keeps you within this little web application here. And it also doesn't have to necessarily be a single page application like TweetDeck or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. Most websites will work. Now, I have run into a few that kind of don't play nicely and don't really work. For example, I tried to make a natified version of Luke Smith's website, and for whatever reason that just wouldn't work, so I'm not really sure what was going on there, but most things I've run across do work perfectly fine. Okay, so that's enough for that example. Let's actually move on to how to use the application. So this is the GitHub page right here, and the way it describes itself is make any web page a desktop application. Now, as I said, most work fine. You're probably not going to run into anything weird happening if you're using anything fairly popular. So I'm guessing the developers on macOS, but that's not too important. Now, basically the reason why this exists is because the developer got really annoyed with having to basically switch between tabs because they wanted to access things like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. So they're like, you know what? I'm just going to stick these things in an Electron wrapper and then just treat them as desktop applications. And honestly, I was a bit harsh on this the last time I came across this, back when I did my video on the new version of Microsoft Edge, because in that it has a built-in way to actually make these sort of Electron-wrapped applications. As I said, I was a bit harsh on that and didn't really see much of a point of it, but I've kind of changed how I feel about it, and that's something I do want to point out. A lot of Chromium-based web browsers actually do have a built-in way to do this, Brave being one that does Edge, obviously, and I think you can do it with the default version of Chromium as well. I don't know if there's an equivalent way of doing this within Firefox. I'm not a Firefox user myself, so I'm not really sure. So you can do this if you have a browser like Brave installed, but with Brave, I've noticed that it only works on certain websites. So when you can actually do it, there's a little button that appears right here that basically says, do you want to install this website? And I think it only comes up for websites that they've actually tested. But with Natifier, if I wanted to, I could just take this website right here and just make this GitHub repo a native application if I wanted to. And if you want to install the application, it's available on basically anything that has NPM available. So all you're going to have to do is run npm install natifier-g. Now, my permissions are kind of messed up with npm, so I have to put sudo on there. It's not safe to do it like this, but I don't really have much of an option. I probably should just fix up my uh, npm permissions. And if you haven't fixed them up yourself, you're going to have the exact same problem. So this will take a little bit of time to download, so I'll cut back to when this is actually done. But if you'd rather containerize it so you don't have to use npm, there is also a Docker image available as well. Now the steps to use this are a little bit different from what we're going to be doing today. So I'm not going to be going into the Docker image, but if you know how to use Docker, then feel free to do this if you'd rather not use npm. Okay, so the basic usage of this application is dead simple. All you have to do is find the URL to the thing that you want to natify. So in this case, I'm going to natify GitHub. And all you have to do is run natifier and then put a link in there. Now, it will take a little bit of time if this is the first time that you're running it because it hasn't actually cached Electron. 
Once you've made your first app though, it'll run really quickly. So as you can see, it's already done. And it has a slight problem. So this is the name that it has decided to give it. So the world's leading software development platform, GitHub. So if we just go into the directory called that insanely long name, so this one right here, as you can see, this is actually what it's called the binary. And if we just run that insanely long binary name, as you'll see, it has now opened up the GitHub website within an Electron app. And also, as you can see, the name that has been given in my status bar is that really long name that we just saw. Now, I guess that's kind of fine, but you probably also want to give it a name that, I don't know, is a little bit easier to search for and is a little bit easier to actually write out. And doing that is actually really simple. All we have to do is get rid of this folder now because we don't need it. So this really long folder name, delete that. And what we're going to do now instead is we're going to run this command right here, but we're going to give it the dash dash name option. And I'm just going to call it GitHub in lowercase and just give that a second to run. And what you'll notice is the name is going to be way, way shorter now. So instead of that really long name we saw before, it is now just GitHub dash Linux dash x64. So if we just CD into that directory and we just run dot slash GitHub, as you'll notice, the binary name is now very, very short, and we run this now, and as you'll see, the name in my status bar is still exactly the same because it's pulling that from the actual website, but the binary name is just way shorter now, and it's actually easier to write out. Now, being on Linux, there's technically not a concept of installing software, but we probably don't want to have to write out the full path to the binary every single time we want to run it. So, to address this, you'd want to move the folder containing the binary into a location contained within your path variable. So say your user slash bin, or maybe you have somewhere that's a little bit more local to your user and you have something located within your home directory, for example. So I've got my scripts directory and that contains all of my scripts. And I could set something up to be all of my web applications and that contains all my web applications. It's kind of up to you how you want to handle that. If you have multiple users on your system, then it's probably better to do something a bit more local. But if you're the only user on it, then it's probably going to be fine to put it in your user slash bin. Now, there is a little bit more you can do with the application as well. So let's just have a look at the help page for it. So if we just run natifier dash dash help, there isn't a man page. So it's a little bit annoying, but I guess you can deal with it. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different things you can configure in here. So you have things like obviously the name, but you can manually set the platform. So if you want to set it to be Mac or Mass, what is Mass? I don't know what Mass is supposed to be. Linux or Windows, and you can also set the architecture as well. But I've noticed that it seems to pick up the fact that I'm on Linux pretty easily. So you probably won't have to manually go and set the architecture. But if it is trying to select something different from what you're on, then you'll have to go and do that manually. And there are a lot of options in here that are Mac OS and Windows only. So I'm just going to skip over those ones. If you use an app launcher that actually shows icons, I don't. But if you do, then you can go and manually set the icon for it. If you don't set an icon, it'll try to pull the icon from the actual website. So for example, with GitHub, it'll use the little GitHub icon up here. For TweetDeck, it would use TweetDeck's icon, so on and so forth. But if you want to manually set your own icon for it, then you can do it the icon option right here. You can also set things involving the height and the width of the application. Now, I don't bother to touch these. I just leave them at the default values and then just let my window manager deal with it. But if you want to have, say, a default size for it, then messing with these values is going to be the way that you go about doing that. You can also show a menu bar. So this will show the Electron menu bar. I'm not really sure why you'd want to show that. There's not really anything in there that you really need to see. But if you want to see that, then that is how you'd go about doing it. You can also set things like the user agent string. If you want to disable GPU rendering, not sure why you'd ever want to do that, then that is also available as well. And this one is cool and completely unexpected, but you can also set up Flash support as well. Now to do that, as it says, you're going to need to have the Flash plugin installed for whatever version of Chrome you're using. But it is cool that that can be done as well. Now, this is where it actually gets really cool and can actually fix a lot of the problems that some websites have this option right here, so dash dash inject. So what you can do is you can actually inject CSS and JavaScript into these applications that you're using. So if you want to set a custom theme for the website, you can inject some CSS. Or the reason why the JS is there is because 
When you set up a native application like this, you probably won't have desktop notifications. So to do that, you're gonna to have to do some custom JavaScript to make sure you can actually get that working. Now, I don't ever care about desktop notifications, but if you wanna have them for something like say WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or TweetDeck, then you're gonna to have to have a look into how to do that. But luckily for you, for the really popular web applications, there's actually a couple of AUR packages for that. So as we can see here, there's things like Gmail, Google Calendar, or you have things like Google Docs, Google Keep, Hala, I don't know what Hala is, uh, Messenger, Microsoft Office Online. Now, I thought that Natifier wasn't in the AUR, but it turns out it actually is. But for whatever reason, they've called the project Node.js-Natifier. So yes, it actually is in the AUR. You don't have to directly install it with NPM if you don't want to. So I'm probably gonna switch over to using this version in just a bit. I don't know why it's not just called Natifier. Whatever, it's just, it's not called Natifier. If you want to install it from the AUR, it's Node.js-Natifier. We also have things like Twitter, WhatsApp, and YouTube Music. So these will have things like custom injected JavaScript. So be careful with what you're doing. I don't know if any of them are going to be malicious. I'm not saying to use them, but they are here if you do want to test them out. Now, going back to the options for just a moment, there's two more in here I want to mention. So basic auth username and basic auth password. So what these are going to do is let you send along a basic authentication request to the service you're actually doing. Now, most things are probably gonna be using a bit more than basic auth, but if you're trying to do something like, say, Natify an internal web application for your company, they might just be using basic authentication for that, and in that case, what this is gonna do is send along an HTTP packet with the authentication information, so when you open up the application, you'll automatically be logged in. And there's some other things in here that may be of interest in here to you as well. So things like starting in full screen mode or hiding the window frame, enabling or disabling the troubleshooting logs, disabling the context menu, disabling the developer tools, and a bunch of other little things like that. Sending crash reports to an external URL. So if you want to log these reports to an external server, you can use this option right here. And yeah, there's a bunch of other things in here. The clear cache one actually could be useful as well. So if you're having some problem where it's caching information from an older version of the web app and the web app gets updated, then you might want to clear the cache between each launch of the application. So that's pretty much everything for what Natifier can do. But what is it actually doing? Well, what it's doing is basically making something akin to a progressive web application. Now, PWA, the long and short of it is it's basically a piece of software that's built with web technology, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it'll have things like offline support, push notifications, access to device hardware, and it creates a user experience similar to that of a desktop application without having to be built natively for that system. Now, the reason why I say it's akin to being a PWA rather than actually being one is because what we're basically doing today is putting the website within a minimal web browser. It doesn't have things like offline support, push notifications. The push notifications can be done, but you have to do that yourself manually. It doesn't just come with the fact that we've stuck the website within an electron wrapper. So what we're effectively doing is sticking it within a minimal web browser rather than making a PWA, but the effect is pretty similar. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Now, I'm probably gonna start using this a little bit more often because I've got a second web browser installed solely for the fact that I have my second channel. So on that second web browser, I have things like my second Mastodon account logged in, I have my second YouTube account logged in, and everything related to that second channel. And the only reason I have that browser installed is so that I can actually have those things logged in. But what I could do instead is just natify those websites and then just log into the Electron Wrapped version with that account. And that's a way I could get rid of that web browser. I don't know, I might do that. I'll think about it, that's for sure. So I think that's pretty much everything for this. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter D, Rode, Tony Don Oculari, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gearies in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version is available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also remember to go check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. This video was a massive struggle for me to record. I don't know why. I think I just didn't get enough sleep last night. And I'm out.